Ow! 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 All right, welcome back for another Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. This is season three, Monster Chiller Horror Theater. Oh yeah, I am your host, Eight Dan Stanadu. Happy to be with you today, and we are going to talk about Dracula A.D. 1972. Wow, this is a Hammer movie, and we love ourselves some Hammer around here. But let me introduce the rest of the guys. I got, I got Jumpin' Jack Hall! I, uh, you know, I never thought I'd say this, Dan, but uh, I have new appreciation for you and how well you do that how thing. <laughs> now that I've heard Jim trying to. <laughs> <laughs> It, it is true. Do not try this at home. <laughs> you know, Stan is a trained professional. <laughs> Leave it for the professionals. Well, yes. you got you to remember, like, we do eight episodes per season here. And what happens is that the first couple are always rough. But by the end, it's just like, oh, yeah, ow! <laughs> you got the pro going on. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, Jack. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Oh, yeah. That hurt. You <laughs> got to stretch first. You get, like, make sure. Make sure to stretch first. Do your breathing exercises. Oh, yeah. Get in the zone. All right. Now we got. Wait, wait, wait. No, now, now the challenge is being laid. The gauntlet. Okay, wait. One second. <laughs> yeah. You know, go back to the drawing board practice. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to you at a later date. Eh? You're welcome. <laughs> All right. Well, well, you're hearing the voice of Nick Boxer. Nick, Nicky Boxers, mm -hmm. and greeting salutations from the sunny shores of uh, somewhere uh, that is Island. not uh, th that is not in the Midwest. Frankenstein okay. Island. All right. yeah. Oh man, that's where we all want to live is Frankenstein Island. It was warm. I, you know what? If I could choose that or the island on Raw Force, dude, I'm choosing Frankenstein Island. Man. Actually, you know what? Naked women on the other one. I'm choosing Raw Force Island. And the, rounding out the group, James Kata. I am thrilled to be here. In the year of our Lord, 1972. 1972. Oh yeah, we gotta do some dancing because it's a, it's a, it's a funky movie we got going on. Dracula AD 1972. What All a weird right. Name. Well, <laughs> well, groovy Nikki Boxer. Why don't you tell us all about the Dracula from 1972? Yes, Dracula 72 AD, 1972 AD um, actually is an offshoot of the Hammer films. We got both Peter C Cushing and I want to say Peter Laurie, but it's not, <laughs> that is not his name. <laughs> Christopher Lee. <laughs> Christopher Lee, that's where I'm going with this. Um, so in 1872... Uh, Dracula is killed by a Van Helsing and then is re erected by resurrected by hippies in a hundred years later in 1972. Dracula, of course, wants to besmirch the Van Helsing name, so he goes after the great great granddaughter, or sorry, the the latest descendant, let's say, <laughs> of the Van Helsing family and wants to turn her into a blood-sucking vampire. Luckily, a crack team of, well, let's just call them distracted detectives and Van, Van Helsing's uh, male descendant, let's say, uh, is there to stop him from wreaking havoc. So, did you guys watch the same film I did? <laughs> mm -hmm. Having heard that, not sure. <laughs> yes. I, w I would say, more, are they more precisely mods? Yeah, I, mods. Yeah, yeah. mods. Would you call them mods? Right, right. Yeah. I say it's mods. A, it seems yeah. late for mods, but... Well, I, I, I just thought of it as that they were British hippies. They come in, hippies come in different flavors. You just mm -hmm. have to, like, roll with it. It's it's weird because because the whole time that I'm watching it, I uh, I just keep going back to to a Clockwork Orange, you know, and I have to. There's so much of that feel. To, so to much of that. Up. 
So yeah, it's yeah, it is it is hard to put that aside as you're watching it. Well, and just and the what is it? It's like the first twenty or thirty minutes that's entirely just takes place with the mods and and the movie starts out with them at a party and a band and this is very little that va- uh, dracula that's yeah. for damn sure <laughs> yeah. it takes quite a we have with this great opening scene of a uh, van helsing and dracula having it out on a carriage and there's a big carriage crash and i was and thinking dracula that's not 1972 but... <laughs> in 1872 yeah. and then 30 minutes goes by before we have dracula again <laughs> I think you're skipping over how great that party was. That party is great. Oh, there's I no, mean, no doubt. We, 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 I mean, it has the only good music in the movie um, done by uh, the Stone, uh, Stone, Stone Ground. Stone Ground. Stone Ground. Introducing yeah. Stone Ground is what's in the credits. They were awesome. Yes. They say did, did anyone Stone get a, f- uh, a horrifying fact from this movie? Um, because the lead singer. Fair fact. In- Fear facts. Is that what we're calling them? Yeah, this season's fear fact. It's the a play lead, on his play on a TV show. The lead singer that has a fairly prominent role in that uh, initial party scene was also the lead singer of a little band called Bo Bremel, which you may know from the Flintstones episode in season six, episode one where Fred Flintstone creates his own dance, the flip, Flintstone flip. No, I was hoping you were going to say the way out. That's the one I remember. Way oh, out. Nice. Way out. No, <laughs> I, that, that's what I initially thought, but no. It, uh, the Flintstone flip was, was, the big, <laughs> was the big thing there. I was just glad that I was able to tie and I, I will give you a Valentino, Stone the Ground into the Flans, Flintstone. Stone Ground was an American band. They, th- it was going to be the Faces, uh, the legendary band, the Faces, wow, uh, wow. and and they were last minute replacement. So there's there's a, another fear fact. And what's weird is that, I mean, amongst the many things that are weird in this movie, so they say introducing Sto- uh, Stone Ground in the opening credits, and then the first introduction we have to the 1970s is stone ground playing at a house party they play two songs for it for six minutes non-stop awesome they're songs. playing they're like they, but then because never because they had a contract with the faces to really show off their music and then then they're like oh <laughs> shit <laughs> but then but with them we never see stone ground again <laughs> don't have anything to do with the movie nobody said that oh yeah it's it's it was crazy because I'm just watching it and I'm like, I'm digging on Stone Ground, but when does the Dracula start? <laughs> <laughs> and then you start, and then of course, so they meet, they meet, I forget his name, but they meet uh, this character and he's like, kind of joins their gang, their group, their. Uh... John- Jonathan Aculard. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Johnny Acula. <laughs> yeah, Al- Alucard. Alucard. Yes, Alucard. Right. Alucard. Is, is how many movies has Alucard been used in? Like, <sighs> oh, I, I mean, like Son of Dracula. Goes back, yeah, that goes back to like Son of Dracula. I, I'm yeah. guessing 1,972. <laughs> <laughs> I came like across you couldn't was... rearrange those letters to spell anything else. <laughs> I came across like some there was there's like a, a a currently running show that used Alucard and and people didn't know immediately who it was. Well, and the worst part <laughs> is is that is that so there's that one scene where Peter Cushing's Van Helsing character is rearranging the letters. It's not even that you have to rearrange oh the God. letters. He's drawing lines between them and it's just like well, they wanted oh, to make sure you knew it's that fucking, you could figure it out. It's fucking they did Dracula not trust the backwards. audience to put it together. Yeah, it's, there's nothing special <laughs> about it. You know, it's, it's just Dracula backwards. Really. What I actually couldn't figure out is why he was named that because he wasn't descendant of Dracula or anything like that. He was a follower thereof. It's not like I'm going to take my boss's last name and spell it back <laughs> just because. That, 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 is, that is a really great point. <laughs> that makes that makes no sense at all. He's just he is just the biggest. He's just what the kids call a stan. He is. He's just a, a psychotic fan. 
<laughs> top five is on boss. Yeah, well, well, but but then when he afterwards, uh, when he brings Dracula back, Dracula says like, "Oh, I controlled you and made you do it." <laughs> but but it was obvious that he actually really wanted to anyway, since he's begging for the power the whole time. So it's like, oh, I need to be a sexy vampire like you, Christopher Lee. You're looking a little old, but still, it's okay. <laughs> I want to be a sexy vampire. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the movie was inspired by an actual real-life occurrence in London that was happening. The, the, the Highgate vampire. Uh, this media sensation about this real-life supernatural uh, activity at the Highgate Cemetery. So it, it kind of is playing into all that. I think that's something producers say when they want to get a mo- somebody to go to the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's it, it is one of those cases where, like, I I love the police officers because the one guy really just wants to eat. He doesn't give a shit about actually being a police officer, and then, but yeah, they just. They're completely working on their own for the most part. It's like, no, no, don't tell. <laughs> this is too crazy. We don't want to tell anybody else about the vampire because this, this is too crazy. I recognize well, that. That's actually, I, I mean, this is probably a bad thing. I was a bad thing to say about a movie, but I was fascinated by the cop just from the little set piece of his office where he had a whole bunch of like desk games. <laughs> and puzzles to figure out. Oh yes, you you could tell he wasn't a busy cop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and was, in uh... no time was this really explained that you know he likes puzzles and like that. No, he just has a plethora of little knocking balls and little <laughs> uh, just just puzzles. And they're all over his desk to a degree. That's all I could see. I was just checking his desk for shit. <laughs> well, there's a there is a lot of things in this that I that I don't think they really bother trying to explain. They, it's it's <laughs> it's good enough that they have the characters, and when they start <laughs> dying, it's. It's like, oh no, this person's dying. That's terrible. Well, they're mem- they're a member of this gang here, but uh, but who? I don't know. We better we better round them up. <laughs> now, 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 they're a group. She went to great lengths to distinguish her group of friends from a gang. Yes. Well, what do they call she themselves? Explain they... that in. They call themselves a group. Oh, just a group. Okay. Just a group of friends. Just a group of friends. Because Peter Cush- was it Peter Cushing? Uh... When when Val Helsing points out, you know, you and your gang, you're dying off. It's a group. She got quite <laughs> defensive. I, I thought that was a little weird, little piece of dialogue. <laughs> that is to- totally fair. Yes. Um. Yeah. I mean, stuff happens in this movie. There's no question about that. It does indeed. But but the but it doesn't feel like there's a lot of stuff that happens in this movie. Well, I mean, it's it's a movie that like the hammer Dracula fans like, because I mean, it's the first time that Lee and Cushing had been together since the original in 1958. So they actually waited 15 years for them to do a movie together again. So hammer fans, and it's got that hammer feel. They like it, but the critics weren't too favorable to this film. And I could see that. I could see why it is. The hammer fans are forgiving of its faults, but by why it is also somebody who's not a hammer fan would watch this and go, what? <laughs> it, it's a very competent movie in a lot of ways. Uh, it could be just generic hippies dying, but every beatnik hippie dude we have, they're distinctive. I, at no time was I like confused on who 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 was doing what. I I like that about the film. Um, solid filmmaking. Do you know Cushing and Lee did over twenty films together? Yeah, and there were only three that were Dracula. Well, <laughs> yeah, uh, Cushing was uh, was the he they was did another Frankenstein one. in the Hammer. They had films, one that is... came out like two weeks before this together. Wow, really? I can't remember which one? Yeah, wow. well, I got to look that up. Yeah, I remember well, seeing they did some of the Frankenstein's together. Uh, uh, did the Frankenstein's together? Lee is the, yeah. the creature, and and Cushing is the doctor. Of course. 
Yeah. It could I, it, not be the other way around. Uh, um, Horror Express. Nice. Two weeks. Uh, two days. I've not, I've not Sorry. Seen that one. That was, Horror Express was released two days before this one. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> that's so, so if you much. wanted your that Lee is... and Cushing, you got your Lee and Cushing. Wow. That, that, that one is not good. <laughs> 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 then why aren't we reviewing it? <laughs> because we haven't done the transportation season the yet. Transportation <laughs> season. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> but but at, it's funny. But at the same time, I know that we well do a transportation season. So you know, <laughs> it's funny. Cause... I'm already putting in my head like five <laughs> films that could fit in there. <laughs> there's like films on. There's a horror films on like. Boats and you know <laughs> supernatural ones and like yeah, there's that one, the Terror Train or whatever with the uh, uh, was oh, it yeah. Jamie oh, Lee Curtis? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Run, oh, there's a lot. Train. Of, Runaway this, Train is the one I would put in. Tons oh, yeah. of crap, tons of crap. I'll tell you. This is this is the <laughs> this is the listeners getting a sneak peek into how, how we yeah. choose seasons. <laughs> it, the listeners, the listeners don't know that we choose three seasons for everyone we record because <laughs> we just want to watch and talk about these movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I now this movie does have something that Hammer was well known for. I will give them a lot of credit for this. Uh, they have women with really enormous breasts. They do. They do. Magnificent. The the so so Alucard Johnny Alucard. I love that name too, Johnny Alucard. Uh, <laughs> he needs to sacrifice someone um, to uh, to bring Dracula back. Uh, from having been staked and, and gone to ash. Uh, apparently he had to wait 100 years to do this. It's very vague as to why it had to be exactly 100 years. Uh, sounds good. Luck, I, sounds, sounds, like, sounds like superstition more than anything else. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, the young lady that he covers in, uh, in blood has magnificent breasts. <laughs> yes, and calling what he covered, you have <laughs> never sound creep, sounded creepy <laughs> ever, and that's coming from me. <laughs> the the blood in that scene was interesting. Yeah, it was... I've never seen like them going with the foam blood, like, foaming blood before, <laughs> and it wasn't the noise. red yeah. in later scenes that spurted out of Dracula. Isn't that it, more it was like a deep ha- foam red? I, Isn't it was that a odd. hammer thing? Like the blood yeah, couldn't I think be so. colored? Yeah, I think that looks familiar to me to all the hammer. Yeah, yeah. it, it seems to me it's something with the British British board is that it, it couldn't be blood colored. Like it had to be kind of cartoonish to show that much blood. Yeah, and hammer showed a lot of blood. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also good, like the, good comeback. A lot to add there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad we were able to riff on that for four exchanges, <laughs> and then it just kind of slowly crawled to a halt. Hammer <laughs> likes blood. Yeah. Me too. Blood is good. Yeah, and the scene. <laughs> All right, do we have anything to add? Here? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're hardly done. All right, well let's let's move into the into the scoring and uh and then we'll I'm sure we'll have some things to add at that point. Oh yeah. So we we as always as we search for the ultimate B movie, we rate the films in five categories, none of which are objective quality. And the first category is called Schlock Appeal, and we start with Stan. Well, this this is a movie like, and I and I like the Hammer movies it as a general rule. Sure. Um, is, this was a movie. <laughs> this, it is. this is a yep. movie. Yes. I check. yes. Thanks. Um, oh man, you're you're doing well there. You're doing well. <laughs> so, but it has stone that. ground, so so I, I I like the fact that it has stone ground. I, I it's it's not my favorite of the Hammer movies. But it is it is a very fun movie to watch once you can get past the whole um, mod element to it, and I and I appreciate that. But it's just so weird as an update, so it it kind of takes you a little bit out of the picture. I'm just going to go with uh, six because I, it feels it feels almost like two different movies to me. Yeah, um, I'm I'm gonna go with uh. A seven. I mean, the title alone has schlock all over it. 
Dracula 1972, uh, you immediately get, you know, an image of your head. And it is exactly that. Uh, the medium for um, a Hammer film slock appeal is five. So then you go plus or minus. I'm going to go plus one, six. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that about you, Jack. You're always so exacting in the way you score. <laughs> very careful. You're thoughtful. It's, it's very no scientific. mistakes. No recriminations. <laughs> no mistakes. Ever. It always holds up on appeal. Uh, <laughs> Except for when I when I'm scoring, I when I actually used to write them down and reverse the two movies <laughs> <laughs> that we were scoring. <laughs> that was kind of a bad. I, bad un- unlike Stan, the uh, the. The, the mods is what sells me on this movie and uh, and the juxtaposition of uh, go-go dancers and and Christopher Lee as Dracula I think is amazing uh, so but I only went with a seven uh, our next category we call more heart than budget and Stan hmm more heart than budget oh man you know it this one's uh this one's a tough one for me hammer feels like it it has Again, again, it's it's almost like Jack said, where you know, like a five is your mean, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm only gonna have to, I'm gonna go with a minus in this case, and I'm gonna go with the four. You know what? I'm I'm shooting this one right up the middle. Five. <laughs> I I don't think anyone was insulted beyond that, but you know, they, they were going on to another horror film next week. So yeah, literally, right. I mean, this they went right to a sequel on this. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, is there a sequel to this one? Yeah, there's a sequel to this. Satanic rights. Nice. You know, I will. I mean, they that. like I say, they Hammer did eight of these films. Yeah. But this one, I mean, technically, this isn't a sequel to the 1958 horror Frankenstein because in that one uh, it took place in 19, in in uh, 1858 or something like that. So timeline wise, it doesn't <laughs> match up. That God, that, you date nerds over, drive me up the wall. And, well, <laughs> you're you're the guy who who would have watched the CBS version, where when CBS showed it, they just uh, just re- retitled it uh, Dracula Today. <laughs> <laughs> when they showed it on CBS, so. that's a great title. Yeah, Dracula Today. I'm like, really today, 1980, and all these mod kids. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, six. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that's. Maybe that's what the CBS office looked like in, the, in 1980. <laughs> Honest to God, thought that Jack had said CVS, and it really, <laughs> it really it's a it's, it's a pharmacy. <laughs> I I went with a seven on this one, um, and uh, and I I refuse to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Good. explain mine. Excellent. <laughs> The less explanation, the better. That's what I say. <laughs> All right, our next category we call "What the fuck moments." All right. Well, the the party by itself now had a couple of of uh, kooky moments because I like the fact that the party with that had Stone Ground playing. You know, there's the mods dancing around but at the same time there's all these people that that look like they're for uh you know a really highbrow dinner party and they're pissed off because the mods have kind of taken over because they were talked into hiring stone ground i guess this is what happens when you don't get the faces uh playing the party <laughs> is that is that all the wrong uh element come to the come to the party so it, it was a very odd introduction to that uh, to that moment the the one element that i'm going to point to though is uh stephanie beecham and her and her wonderful breasts uh she was jessica van helsing and there's this point where she is in bed after finding out that one of her friends uh died and peter cushing comes in uh, to to like talk to her for a moment, and he puts his hand down by her breast, and 
at that moment, you realize that she is wearing... Now, Now he is her grandfather. Like, Grandpa <laughs> Van Helsing right there. And, and he's going for a quick feel. Well, and at that moment, you realize that she is wearing this sheer negligee thing that, that you can totally see her breast through. And you can see that his hand just goes down there and, like, her breast being large kind of lands on his hand. And it's one of these moments where you're like... Oh, that's actually really fucking uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I have to rewatch this movie now. And, and so, I that was to me the the one part that I really noted and said, "Wow, what the fuck." And so, <laughs> so I'm going to give it a six based on the based on her breasts. Um. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, no, I'm. I'm only giving this one a three for the d- WTF factor. Um, this d- did not have anything I was not expecting. If you told me it was a Hammer film in 1972, t- taking place in 1972, this is exactly the film <laughs> I was going to imagine. Well, I'm, I, first off, I mean, there's a, there's a few things here, like uh, Peter Cushing. I mean, the guy. I mean, like the guy, he's quite amazing. He never ages. You've seen him in Rogue One. The guy never, ever. <laughs> <laughs> he looks looks the same as he did in 1977. Yeah, just amazing. Only a bit oh. more mannequin like. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> just slightly glossier. That's that all. movie That's could go all. boogaloo just based on him. Um, <laughs> uh, what the hell was I saying? No, I mean, I can't get, I can't put together the timeline that. He his grandfather died in 1872, and he's only like 60, and and I can't. That means his father was like must have been like 50 when he had him because he was already. <laughs> only you would watch a movie with calculator in hand to make sure. <laughs> you know, no, I was, I was right. also trying to figure it out because at a certain point Jessica refers to the first Van Helsing as her great grandfather, which makes no sense. Well, she, and, and it, originally she was supposed to play his daughter. Yeah. And Peter Cushing's real life wife had passed away. And I guess he looked so horrid and haggard after that experience that they made him her his, the grandfather instead of the father. It was a, literally a last minute thing. So that might, but none of this makes like timeline. You guys yeah. promised me when we were doing this podcast, there'd be no math. None <laughs> of this you You sense. created math. This is all on uh, you. There's one scene He's... in this where, where like Van Helsing is looking for her for Stephanie Beecham, Meacham or Beecham. She went on to be in Dynasty and the Colbys and stuff like that. That's where she played like a vixen character, right? Like that's her most famous thing. And 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 he's looking for her, his granddaughter, and running around london like an idiot with no plan just looking for her and <laughs> a... and he's sitting there and, there and there's a close-up camera on him and he looks around in horror and then he realizes that this face is a mannequin that looks nothing like her and <laughs> i don't think there's any other part of like it's just like a mannequin head i don't even think there's a body like she's just standing there not moving he's he clearly thought this was her and she's clearly dead she's not but wait it's a mannequin and that, to me, is one of the great WTFs of all time. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, her, one of her friends comes running out and goes, I've been looking all over. There you are. I've been looking all over you for you. And right after she almost runs them over. And I'm like, 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 even London at the time was, what, like a city of 15 million people? Like, you just, <laughs> like, there's, I know there's no. It's not that no big. Cell Come on. Uh, that's a big city, dude. Um, <laughs> It's only yeah. four million or so. Good lord, man! Just oh, no, <laughs> more than that. Uh, yeah, so there's definitely some, but no more than your average Hammer film. So uh, five. <laughs> <laughs> so the traditional ways to kill a vampire. What? We've got we've got a wooden stake, and death by wheel. We got we got death by <laughs> wagon wheel. Um, which is great. Um, <laughs> we've got uh, we got your we got your sunlight. Um, garlic just garlic doesn't kill him; it just keeps him away. 
So those are your traditional ones. The one that's always forgotten is running water. Now, the reason that this is forgotten is because it's terrible on film. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Alucard is killed in a shower. <laughs> they, they decide that they're going to I use was running what water. Hell. Now you finally make it make sense, thanks to you. Yes, it, it is. It is in the original Dracula novel by Stoker, um, and even then, it isn't. It never comes into play because it's a terrible one. <laughs> Blood of Dracula. He died in running hot water. Yeah, see, it's it, but it's it's a lousy thing on film, like it just because it like it limits you so much. Like, he's, vampires even aren't even supposed to be able to cross running water. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> I mean, even in this film, I, I thought you know the the Dracula death. I mean, the first one is spectacular, but mm-hmm. the second time Gra- uh, Dracula dies, he literally falls into his own grave onto <laughs> a spike. Yeah, which has it's filled with punji sticks. It's awesome. Yes. <laughs> but Alucard, Alucard's killed by a shower. That's <laughs> yeah. true. It's true. I was Just wondering why that killed him. I, I actually thought that was unique. I mean, you you have a bunch of, I mean, that whole fight scene there. You have a bunch of the Dracula jokes. You know, they chase him around with reflected sunlight, mm-hmm. and then they throw a Bible in his co- coffin, which I didn't yep. even know was a thing. I, I, um, <laughs> I mean, if for crossworks, I would assume. I mean, there's probably a whole. Yeah, bunch no, of- I, 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 sorry, took that whole scene as or uh, his entire character is like lesser ways to kill a vampire. The movie. <laughs> um, it's a great. Yeah, we, we know we've used them all before, so we got to try find new ways. Mistakes. Time to use. Time to use. Time to use the the plumbing. Um, <laughs> and and that actor just chews up the scenery during that scene oh god he just shrieks that he's never he's never gonna tell van helsing how to find his granddaughter you'll never find her you'll never find her oh he just eats up the scenery in that scene johnny alucard makes the movie for me because he's just ridiculous in every scene he's in (laughs) and you know he's a bad guy because the cops don't even want to arrest van helsing (laughs) Because it's obviously he's broken into this poor guy's apartment and killed him. Well, he killed yeah, him, he killed him by him having him fall into the shower. I mean, how do you, how do you like, yeah, send you somebody stick to my jail head for... underwater that long? I'm going to die too, unfortunately. <laughs> That's how you know he's a vampire because I held his head underwater. <laughs> yeah. Nick, re- Nick does rarely shower. <laughs> so so is it possible that you are a vampire then? <laughs> so I gave it a five there we're moving on to the next category called memorable moments memorable moments um the stone ground blade it had <laughs> it had a uh it had peter cushing and christopher lee which i really enjoyed um probably as you as you talk about it definitely the vision of of johnny alucard uh, all dead in the in the shower kind of pops into my head but uh i'm not 100 percent sure that there's going to be a lot that i'm going to be uh remembering out of this baby in uh in a couple of years so i'm just gonna have to go with uh three i i'm going with six um i enjoyed this film it was a good film there's a lot in it but in the end, it's just going to fade away with a hundred other hammer moments. This is a very hammer film, and I'm going to have a t- tough time remembering what film, what moment was in, I think. You know, and, and this is actually where it's really interesting to do the podcast, because I got this as an eight. So, I mean, we're going from three to six to eight, seeing all over the place. I mean, I think Stone Grab yeah, is really I'm mad. pretty sure you grab your numbers from random sources. <laughs> <laughs> you just got a, ten, just no, got no, a ten-sided no. die. Roll. This isn't Frank and Hooker. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I am a D&D geek, and this is how I do it. No, no, it's because Stone Grab is there. I think that the actual, uh, like, the cast is great. and not, Christopher Lee and, and Cushing together, obviously. But also, I think everybody else who's cast in this, this thing is fantastic. Um, and uh, that, to me, makes it very memorable. So I think it's a fantastic ca- cast. Everybody's perfectly cast in the role from beginning to end. I think uh, that the, 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 the 
satanic ritual where they bring back um, with the music and the, and the church and everything that, where they bring back Dracula. I think that's an incredibly memorable scene. I think the fight at the end, which is a little ridiculous because Peter Cushing does look so old um, and, and frail, but I think it's, it's not, and you know, it doesn't match the first fight that they did, but I think it's very exciting. I, I think that this is the strength of the film to me. Well, certainly I'm going to go, uh, I'm not going to go quite as high, but I'm going to go with a seven. Um, when we were putting the season together, I really wanted to have a hammer film. And I thought the hammer film that's got the go-go dancers, which one was that? Cause that, <laughs> that's the one I want. That's the one I want the rest of the guys to see. Uh, and uh, I, yeah, I mean, Cushing and Lee together, I just think they're one of the best screen duos that there ever was. Um, and I, I wonder. I don't know if there's actually a film where they work together. Um, you know, it might be like Karloff and Lugosi that they had to be opposed to each other when they were in a film. All uh, right, we are moving on to the last category we call crazy concept. Crazy concept. Well, this one, when you consider uh, horror or like the uh, Hammer movie, the Dracula and Van Helsing jumping into the 1970s with a mod group um this one's kind of got some crazy on it for me so i'm gonna give it a seven uh i'm only going with a six uh because i have a feeling they were preparing to make a, a dracula film and went how can we cut the budget oh let's make it <laughs> in uh, 1972 that way we don't have to buy sets um yeah I'm, again a little crazy not totally out there not boogaloo. <laughs> yeah, it's it's um it's kind of low hanging fruit to just you know you want to revitalize and and re give a shot in the arm to the franchise. Just find a way to bring it into the modern modern era. Never mind that that means that you're going to take take a, a you know a, a sixty year old um, um, Van Helsing, and a uh, hundred years later he looks the exact same and is coincidentally the exact same age as his grandfather. <laughs> And and it just makes no <laughs> sense. Uh, it was when he died a yeah, hundred years ago. It just it, you know like it's just very low hanging fruit. So to me, it's not a crazy concept at all. It's it's, it's a three. <laughs> I completely understand without agreeing. Uh, <laughs> I I got down in my notes that I refer to this as seventies vamp exploitation. That's uh, I'm I'm giving this an eight. I think uh, I think the go go dancers and Dracula is a is a hard sell. Uh, all right, that brings us to the end of the scoring, and we uh, as always we have six secret modifiers, none of which apply to this film. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we kept in secret. <laughs> I considered one, but I, I decided that uh, that an early death does not count if it's Dracula that's the one that's dying. Uh, <laughs> Given that you which, know he better come back, otherwise it's going to be the mummy <laughs> and Christopher Lee's going to die in 10 seconds and never come back. <laughs> which gives us a final score of 57.5, tying it with Bloodsport from season one. <laughs> oh wow! I, we are we are really dialing in that mainstream um, that mainstream score. Uh, we've wow. got uh, Revenge of the Nerds at fifty eight, Blood Sport at fifty seven point five. Uh, we have uh, we have and uh, and Monster Squad at fifty eight point five. We have we have found the sweet the we have definitely uh, got a pattern showing in the more mainstream uh, films that we come at uh, in our search for the ultimate B movie. Yeah, and I guess, I guess it's really interesting when you think about it, because Hammer, normally you wouldn't think of as mainstream, but it just has these slightly more mainstream elements to it. And I, and I think as I was watching it, I certainly enjoyed it, but let's be honest, is it Frankenstein Island? No. <laughs> you know, no really, what not. is Frankenstein no. Island? Uh, <laughs> And we're not asking what film, like, I mean, what is Frankenstein Island? I've watched it, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in, in that B-movie comparison, like, it's, it's, it can't compare to the wolf guys and the, and, you know, hots or that kind of thing. It's, it's just not quite that same level. Still a good movie, though. 
So I appreciate that we watched it. And and honestly, as you said before there, James, you know, you cannot top Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. What an amazing combination. Absolutely. So great together. Well, all right then. Um, so moving on to the next episode, I am super excited because we're going to talk about Frankenhooker. So we're oh, prostitutes finally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are jumping off the deep end. You know, if th- this wasn't the deep end, this was the shallow end. We're going for the deep end to wrap up season three of Monster Chiller Horror Theater. But uh, Jim, why don't you tell all the folks where they can find us on the internet? The best place to find us is on Instagram at Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo and use the hashtag Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. Uh, and uh, if you are on anything else, uh, you should talk to our uh, podcast sponsors, We Talk Podcasts. Uh, so, wetalkpodcast.com and We Talk Podcasts on Facebook or Twitter. And that'll keep you up to date with all the new episodes as they come out. Make sure to subscribe because we. We will have a little break between seasons, and then uh, we'll, the new ones will be uh, early December is when we'll have our next episodes. And we will announce the uh, first of our next season, season four, uh, during the next episode of Frankenhooker. All right. So see, well, these are all being released on the same day. So just announce it here. Like, they, they don't have to listen <laughs> no, because the, 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 we, we want people to listen to Frank and Hooker. Listen to that one, or no? What if, what if they don't listen to these in order? I don't yeah. know what happens. Don't listen like, to that one at all. Then. Well, it doesn't matter. They can they can hear it then. But. They could they can scrub to the end. I guess. Like, yeah. That's if, no, that's no what, like what just it. say it. You people. Anyways. I or, you think. Can, or you can look for us on Instagram where it will probably yeah, be yeah. just on there like about the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we go out, everybody everybody can do the, can do their howls. So, all right, Nick, you go first with your howl. All right. Nick is me. <laughs> <clears throat> Channeling my inner wolf. Building up for it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Wow, it's still, still going. Out. That was good. I'm done. Like I can't compete with that. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, Jack. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. See if you can just, beat it. Just, just, just imagine you're with your dog. You're having an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fetus. <laughs> 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 My dog right now is looking at me, <laughs> kind of a little horny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, James, show me this terrible, uh, this terrible hell that you've got. Your dog, your dog's named Jin or so, right? Yes, that's right. That's, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. All right, that's. <laughs> it's, just, it's just terrible. <laughs> but is it a terrible wolf or is it a terrible? Uh, Count Floyd. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for sex, Actually, oh, like, we're supposed to be doing Count at? Floyd. I thought we were doing a wolf. No. Okay. <laughs> I, woo, children. <laughs> I don't know why my Count Floyd sounds a little more like Scooby. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, join us next episode for the end of Monster Chiller Horror Theater. Season three of the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. Ow! So I am your host, Eighth Dan Stanadu. Thanks for listening to for Jim, for Jack, for Nick, and myself, the Kung Fu Electric Boogaloo. Oh.